Oh, happy Tuesday, and welcome to another episode of Whiskey Untitled. Today, we're going to be... Wait a minute. I don't even know what's going on. That guy over there... Yep. ...is drinking caveman. And this guy here is Wally from Scotch and Sniff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's get on with the show. So, uh, you were, you were speaking? You were telling me about, uh, what's today's talk? Oh, right. Today, we're going to be, uh, talking about overhyped bottles, which is a subject that we've covered with Scotch and Sniff before, but today we're going to do it a little bit differently. Yeah, I think we're just going to put a commentary on it and stuff like that, and it's what we have, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, sounds like a plan. I think the next stage is always is the uh, you know what's in the glass. The stuff. Yeah. So, um, sniff. Well, what you got in your glass today? I know it looks just like what you have in your glass, but this is actually Glenfiddich Thirty. Ooh, fancy! Look at you, man. Bring out the thirty year. For me, I got the Nika Seventeen Year Old Pure Malt. Taketsuro. Yep. Um, no, I actually like this bottle a lot. It. For this one, it actually tastes better when you open it up. So a lot of my friends pour half the bottle, put it in a decanter and stuff like that, and let it sit. So oh, wow, yeah, I've had this bottle four years now, and it still tastes amazing. So that's an experiment we still need to do. I was talking to uh, who was I talking to? There was somebody, another blogger who did it, where he uh, just like waited for a bit and mm-hmm. let people, or he let like the glass sit out for ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, and an hour just to see what changed in the flavor, and uh. It was, it was pretty cool to see his results are a little different. So, yeah, no, I, I've heard that um, Scotch does better uh, under oxidation, bourbon does worse, that kind of stuff. But then again, it's subjective, right? So we don't. Which is weird because theoretically, all it should do is have a lot of the alcohol just evaporate, which yeah. should leave more flavors. But who knows how much uh, how much of that's conjecture? No, yeah, that's what's interesting about it. But yeah, no, um, for me, the seventeen does really well um, aerating after a couple of months. So uh, yeah. Mm. Couple of months. Yep, couple of months to a year, man. That's pretty well. Sheesh. Yeah, dude. Like I said, this is like a mm. four-year-old bottle. So. Dang. I used to do it on special occasions, like you know, this show's a special occasion, so why not bust it out? Yeah, special occasions. Yeah. Clinfitic clarity. Yeah, yeah. Special. Hmm. <laughs> New bottle buys this yep, week. So, uh, yep. what did you pick up this week? Oh, I only got one bottle. So. Only one. Yep, it is the Jefferson's Grand Selection, finished in Sauternes cask, um, letdown. That's the best way to uh, describe it. That much of a letdown? You're, you're sure about that one? Really? Yeah, I thought it would be absolutely sauterny, delicious, dessert whiny, and great, and it was meh. Huh. Which is really weird. That's yeah, sad. And I, I'm a big fan oh. of Jefferson's Reserve. I got quite a few. I got the Experimental Series. I got the regular standard stuff. I got their Ocean mm-hmm. Voyage, so, huh. Oh, I, I only have their 25. Ooh. Their 25 presidential rye is baller. Yeah. It, it tastes so good. There's such strange floral notes in it, like like floral notes that I've never had before. That's the whole reason that I even looked for it. Huh. Yeah, no, I, I don't sadly have the 25. Um, I wish I did. Maybe I'll ask for a sample for it. But um, for yes. me, this week, I got a couple. Mm. Um, so I have the Olds Forester Birthday Bourbon. 2017. Oh, 2017. So I'm very happy with this. I'm still looking for a 16. So if anyone knows where I can get one, um, but so I'm, I'm glad I have this. I'm definitely gonna save this up. Um, probably gonna wait a couple years till I open this up. It's kind of one of my, um, you know, just saving bottles. Have you had this one or you've had the 16, right? I've had the 16. And I actually traded a 16 away for one of the bottles we're gonna talk about today. Oh, hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. But um, no, yeah. Um, I've been looking for some. I've been seeing offers for like 400 bucks and i'm like no nah, that's yeah i didn't know they were valued so high otherwise i wouldn't yeah. trade it for when you see what i traded it for you're gonna go are you kidding okay. me i can't <laughs> wait for that one and then um so my next bottle i have and i picked this up today the weller 12 which we'll be talking about Meh. so um everyone's hype this is definitely a hype beast bottle pick this up yeah, seriously um i know have you had that one before do you have you have that yeah i've had most of the most of the wellers and it's meh huh i don't i just i don't get the hype i really don't it's good it's just not you know it's like anything else it's not what do they want 125 bucks for yeah so i got this at 30 bucks and that's what it's good for yeah i'll I'll take it any day for 30 bucks it's like if mellow corn was 50 dollars, it would be horrible but at 13 dollars and and that's the reason why like i've had so one of my um friends actually traded a Michter's 10-year 
bourbon for a Weller 12 and an El Martili. Wow. Yeah. I I don't know how I feel about any of that. The El Martili, that stuff tastes pretty good, depending on which batch you get. There's some bad ones yeah, out there. Like In my head, I'm like, dude, the meth. And he's like, oh, well, we can't. And to be honest, it was very, very lucky for me to get this. I had called like, before the store even opened, and lucky enough, they did. Oh, wow. Them, so. All right. That's the best. So, yeah, let's... Uh, since I've been talking about that, let's uh, let's jump into the hypeiest bottles. And if you don't mind, since I'm talking about the Weller 12, I'll continue yeah. on with that. Um, so yeah, for my first bottles, the Weller 12 um, Antique Collection and the Reserve are still great. But this bottle is definitely a hype bottle. Um, I know everyone's saying it's it's closest to the Pappy you can get, so on and so forth. You can make poor man's Pappy with it. But like, what, like um, you know, Sniff was saying, $150. Like, that's just, it's crazy. Right, man. Like, don't you agree? One hundred and fifty dollars for, for this? yeah, for 12 a twelve year. year. Twelve year should be like fifty bucks yeah. tops. So, like that, it's definitely a hype bottle. I don't think the flavor profile is a hundred fifty. I think it's the Pappy Association, which people value. At. That's all it is. That's what people are paying so. for. So wait, that got traded for what? Elmer Teeley and what was that other bottle? And uh, for the Mictors Ten. A Mictors Ten bourbon. <laughs> That's what you traded the um, 16 for? No, this Mectorsen bourbon I just found. Ooh. And it's I brought this out because it's overhyped. For, for what people want, like when I see it go for like 100 bucks, I'm like, eh, it's, it's worth 100 bucks for tasting like cucumber juice. That's not bad. But the reality of it is, is it worth like the 150 or $200 that I see it going for? No, not even by any stretch of the imagination. And literally, it's got some strange notes in it. This is the 2016 bottle. And a buddy of mine was like, I have a friend of mine who's got like one of those super noses. And I'm telling you, we were sitting there. We were like, what's that weird smell? What's that weird smell? And he's like, dude, it's cucumbers. And everybody in the room was like, oh, yeah, it's cucumbers. Well, cucumbers in the 17 bottle, man. So I don't know. Maybe... Yeah, uh, maybe. Hopefully, it got better. Yeah. Well, this is the one that um, I forgot the lady's name. The uh, mass, the new master distiller, the female master distiller. So this is her first batch. I mean, women have better noses, anyways. I agree. I definitely agree. So, Doubly so when they're pregnant. That's a whole yeah. different issue. That's what they probably should get, man. Like pregnant ladies. Um, what do you call it? Smell testing bottles. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Love that. Because everyone would come out tasting perfectly. Yeah, I'd be like, holy shit! Yeah, she knows it. <laughs> Let's yeah. make this happen. Uh, but the silly, that's our idea, okay? You can ask us for it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the next one I got here is what my friend also traded for, the Elmer T. Lee. Now, the reason why I feel as though this is an overhyped bottle is because, for one, it's a 40-something dollar bottle, maybe 50 max. It's a good drinker. It tastes really good. But the 150 I didn't even see it for $200. It's ridiculous. I've never paid more than 32 you know what I mean, like, I, I got this all at retail. Uh, this is even, like, you know. Thanks for all the people that sent me this because I've been looking for these for ages. And, you know, the bourbon community, the Instagram community just came in. Bourbon Maine was one of the first people to send it to me. Thanks, man. I still got your main little stamp sticker on it. So I just feel as though this overhyped bottle, it's good, but it's not that good, man. It's not $150. It's, it's, it doesn't even have an age statement on it. Come on, guys. Come on. I mean, it's a 30, it's a $30 bottle for real. Yeah. Hey, Scotch for everyone. Yeah. It's, it's, Hello, it's Scotch true. for everyone. Hey, guys. <laughs> But yeah, so this definitely overhyped bottle. Um, it's good. Jam dude but... too. What's up? Yeah, look at you guys. Look at this. <laughs> got a little group going. It's a party in yeah. here. All right, so uh, Wally, uh, what's your next bottle? I'll go to the one we were talking about. You traded the uh, OFB 2016. Yes. I traded away the Forest for Birthday Bourbon. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you see this, right, you're gonna right, cry. Right, wait, wait, I'm gonna... I traded yeah. away for a brand new bottle of this. Bro, I could have given you that for free. Shit. Because I literally, <laughs> so I can't ever find it anymore. And I actually like the bubblegum flavors that Dude, are in this. Um, it's like right there. Got three bottles. I, yeah, but so the old Forrester birthday bourbon, I paid 60 bucks at Costco. Yeah, I see that. So to me, it was worth this, which I, I mean, I haven't seen for less than 120 yes, since I bought it for about bottles, 60 yeah, bucks. That makes sense. I, I, to me, to me, it's the same equivalent. Yeah. But in terms of the overhype that we're supposed to be talking about today, um, you know, Japanese, Japanese whiskeys is just going nuts today. And I think everybody knows that the entire market's gone absolutely crazy. The, I mean, it started with the Yamazaki 18 and everybody was just like paying, I mean, people want to pay four or 500 bucks for it, but you can see the market now starting to pop. Like the bubble is definitely dying down yep. because I've seen the 18 on sale for 350 and 300 bucks. So yep. it's coming back down. It's, you know, it's not, it wasn't going to last forever and it's, it's better that it hasn't. Because I tried it at a bar, got some of the 18, and it might be a $150 bottle. 
Uh, I don't, see, I don't know. Like, the I know I, the big reason why Japanese whiskeys right now are so overhyped is because of the fact that they're not producing them at a faster rate compared to the bourbons and scotches right now. Uh, I was yeah. reading articles where they're just saying that they just didn't predict it 20 years ago that this was going to be a boom. So the pallets, that the reason why they have that inventory is because of what was the demand at that time. Um, some, yeah. you know, some bourbon companies took the risk. They were like, hey, if we don't sell this now, we can do our normal juice and then we'll just release these special releases. So I I would say, yes, it's a it's an overhyped bottle, but it's it's just like, you know, normal thing, you know, the Japanese kind of market and just not having inventory. That's the reason why they jump so high. Um, so <laughs> sticking on that Japanese theme, Hibiki 12. So we're both the 12. So as, as you know, this is a blend. Um, overall, I think this is overhyped. It's just because of the same reasons, right? The Japanese market, um, they don't have enough 12 years to do these blends anymore. They released the Harmony. The Harmony got overhyped. That went away again. So... Um, it's good. It's, it is my daily drinker. It was my daily drinker last year. Um, I've been kind of saving some of my bottles right now just because of the hype, the hype and not being able to source these anymore. Like I cannot find a bottle on the shelf right now for under a hundred dollars. Like I used to buy these at like 60 bucks a pop. Like it was crazy. Dang. Right. And then, I mean, that's how, that's how it was for a while. Yeah. So, um, that's kind of the, I guess the Japanese bubble, right? That's what happened. And then eventually when the Japanese market comes back up, like the inventory, the liquid comes in, I think we're just going to get, you know, some crazy stuff. I'm hoping it tastes the same. That's the problem, right? When Jim Mari said, oh, Japanese is now the best whiskey in the world, people freaking jumped on that ship and then took all the inventory. Yeah, but he's been wrong a few times. Like oh, I, yeah. that's, I didn't want to post about, uh, actually that's one of the bottles that I didn't grab from the shelf. I didn't want to grab the Booker's Rye Limited. Yep. I didn't want to grab the Crown Royal Nor- Northern Harvest Rye, which isn't bad, but uh, honestly, I'd rather drink the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye over the Booker's Rye yep. because the Booker's Rye at $300, it's just not that great, really. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm trying to think about other overhyped bottles and you can just go through lists, you know, Kentucky Owl stuff, but then that's just more because of supply and demand right um, yeah i don't really get those kentucky owl old pogue yeah. the weird ones that only get that only have like six or seven thousand bottles yeah and everybody's like screaming for them yeah and, i just and don't that, get it and that's just because like hey i want to be that one guy that has it you know and plus we yeah. live in that instagram community where i don't say everyone does it but a lot of people do the one-up kind of things right like oh you got this i got that look at my collection i know and i'm like in my head i'm like the reason why i have this many freaking bottles is because i can't figure out what flavors i like like i have a problem yeah. you know like it's definitely about finding a palette, but I mean, sometimes, so sometimes the hype is legit yeah. and sometimes it sucks. Like a lot of people who've never had the Pappy's 23 are like, Oh, the Pappy 23 isn't that great. And I'm like, have you had it? It actually tastes fantastic. It's got amazing vanilla notes. And a lot of people are like, I'd rather drink the Pappy's 15. And I'm like, have you actually tried the Pappy's 15 though? Comparatively, this doesn't, it doesn't hold a candle to the 23, the smoothness somehow the Oak for the other eight years just rounds out the rest of the flavor. And it goes from, you know, tasting one way to tasting this way. So, I don't know. I think that's one of the ones that's overhyped. Just the number of people who want to knock down nicer bottles because they've never had them, but they read one bad review. I think, well, for the Pappy, um, it was definitely hype and then limited availability. And then, of course, it's good. Like, it, no, you're not going to get hype on bad liquid. There's not, well, let me take that back. There are some bad ones that people get hyped. But, like, overall, you don't get some, like, you know, really bad stuff. It's, it's at least decent or above, you know, above par, right? But yeah, like I definitely generally. know that Pappy is like people just want the name or they want to resell. It's that's kind of what people want to do with it, to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, like if you get it at any kind of retail price, like this is 150 yeah. bucks, like drink it. Oh, dude, drink if it I got that 150 like, bucks, I'm drinking that thing. Like no crazy. I've shared it with so many people. I mean, even the, what I paid for the Pappy 23, I've shared it with so many people just so they could try. Like, okay, this is that thing that people say is a unicorn. Yeah. Now that you've tried it, what do you think? Yeah, and to be honest. If I ever try, mm. like if I ever get a sample from you about that or whatever, or if I try it at a bar, I'm doing it blind. Like I'm not like, don't tell me which one it is because I want to know if I really like it or not. That's what made me sad about the 23 and the 25 when I went to that bar. Oh, really? You were just like, oh, the 23 is better. Tw- the, yeah, the 25 was. Eh. There's there is problems when you get stuff at bars too. I've noticed that uh, like <clears> I had the four grain that was super overhyped. Like people were freaking going crazy about it. It's like. Four hundred dollars a bottle or something at one point. When I had it at the bar for like uh, thirty to forty bucks, dude, it was, eh. But 
But then again, I had the bottom See, of the bottle, so I don't know. Like, was that really my palate? Yeah, what the rest of it was like, or if it was just that bottle. Yeah. Look in the chat. You see that? Scotch for everyone just said, got to try that 15 from you. Made my dad's birthday. I remember that because he, like, reached out to me and he was like, hey, you know, would you mind, you know, sharing something because it's my dad's birthday, something special. Yeah. So, like, that's – that. I mean, that's what this stuff is for. That's what expensive whiskey is for. It's for sharing with friends yeah. so that you can have awesome experiences and, and just, you know, I don't know. That That's what hype is. Hype is really about getting together with people and making something awesome out of brown water. Yeah. You know, like, uh, was it um, – I was – I did a tasting on Friday. So me and a bunch of my buddies, we brought our bottles in. We had the Cavalan Fina Brique. We had the um, Batch 11 bourbon. What else? We had one more bur- uh, one more whiskey that was like double gold awards and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I personally wasn't a fan of the Cavalan. Like everyone, like I. Which, which the one? The Brique the really yeah. like no joke i got so many messages on my instagram of like dude how do you like it it's just my mind and like um if you could see it, i'll show you the picture dude it was the darkest one people have ever seen i think um scotch for everyone even yes, for a four-year-old for a four-year-old dude. it's impossibly dark and like think, think about <clears> this, we saved the best for last so i went through seven other bourbons or seven other drinks before mm. that and i'm i'm hoping my palate was shot that changes a lot right? of things. So I asked him yeah. for a sample, so I'm going to do that in a controlled environment in my space. And, but I did get the root beer sarsaparilla finish that most people get. That thing was crazy. I was just like, huh, this is different. And I kept coming back, and I always wanted the finish, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. The finish is wild. I mean, the whole bottle is wild. I, there's never been a time where I sat down with the Vino Brique and didn't pull out new flavors. It's just incredibly complex for what it is. Yeah. It's it's mind blowing. So like I know everyone's like, oh, it's a whiskey award winner, Jim Murray's best, blah 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 blah. I'm like, okay, get that. Out. But like, I would love to try it again just because of that that interesting ending. It was like, holy shit! Like this is root beer. That's kind of different. You know what I would love to try again? Some whiskeys that I can't afford. I think so. I got two more bottles. How many more bottles do you have for this? Um, I can go one more. Overhead. Do you have to get them or are you good? Yeah, I'll just do this one, and then you go one, and then I'll go one. Yeah, and, go yeah. for it. What you got? So in, in terms of overhyped, yeah. so, you know, you look at the Macallan, and everybody's like, you have to drink the Macallan M because it's supposed to be the greatest thing in the world. And I saved up a poop ton of money to buy this, the Reflection. This stuff is tasty. Ooh. It's good. And especially compared to the Oscuro, which doesn't hold a candle to it, I'm glad that um, – who was it who sent me a sample? Someone sent me a sample of the Oscuro, and I put them side by side. Mm-hmm. It just it just didn't compare. I don't get it. But the reflection itself tastes great. Um, but sitting down at the Macallan 1824 Masters tasting and trying the number six and trying the M, yep. everything changed in my mind. You know, you you see the M and you're like, oh, I have to have this five thousand dollar bottle, six thousand dollar bottle. But then we sat down when we tasted it. I mean, this was before we had eaten anything, and this was literally the third thing we were tasting was the number yep. six. It just reset my entire palate for what whiskey should taste like. Just the the dried dark fruits in it were so balanced. It was just on another level of incredible. And I just now uh, that, that's, that why was I, a blend, that's why I right? stole some. Is that a blend? That was, was a blend. The number six. Yeah. No, these are single. They're single malts. Okay. I'm just wondering, like, I mean, can they recreate these? Because after a while, you know, like, what if you change master distiller or something like that? I'm just, I'm just war. I'm curious. Yeah, and that's the thing. So these, I mean, these barrels are from all these years, but they're getting blended together today as single malts from those distilleries. Yeah. So I'm just wondering. I mean, that was the big thing with the M is like, it, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's expensive, so it must be good. And there's this hype that gets created automatically. Yeah. But when you sat down and tasted it, I mean, there was more hype marketing about how old the whiskey was that went into yeah. it than there was about the actual tasting well, of it. Well, you got to think about it. McAllen's, I have to admit, though, like they're pretty the biggest hype beasts when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like they hype their stuff real well. They put great product placement and they, they have good stuff. Sometimes, sometimes it's valid. Yeah. Sometimes it really is valid. Like they're doing a really good job. Like they they made the edition series one, two, and three because they wanted to make these collectibles, um, you know, more accessible to everybody else at a hundred bucks a bottle. So I get that they're trying to help people, you know, get into this whole collecting yeah. thing. But at the same time, you know, their cast strength killer, their twelve sherry killer. I mean, there are so many, so many offerings that they have that I'm just like, okay, I would drink this all day long, you know. And then they're eight. Oh my gosh, they're eighteen. <laughs> If I could afford to daily the 18, it'd be another world because 18 is so, so, so incredible. See, but the rest of the stuff in between. I never had the 18 either, I don't think. I've, are you I've kidding? I've seen the 18 and then have the year statements. Is that the same one? 
Why is that different? The 18 is not the same as 18 fine oak, okay. but the 18 itself is the 18 sherry. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I used to see that bottle at like a hundred bucks, and mm-hmm. I was like, a eh, hundred bucks, really worth it? Really? Yeah, I used to see it at two hundred all the time, and I wish I'd bought like I don't know ten. Yeah, and, that, and, that's, and I guess that's a problem. Like sometimes you're just like, crap, I should have bought those. So yeah, it was definitely one of those bottles where I'm like, eh, it's it's like two hundred and fifty bucks around my area now, something like that. Eighteen is a classic. And I'm like, eh, I, I I know it's a bottle one day, but I don't think I got too much stuff that I want to try. So yeah, all right. I mean, I've got another eighteen on the shelf waiting for me to crack it open. So maybe maybe one day, maybe when I'll go visit you or something, try it out. Um, all right, my turn, I guess. So, um, I guess still hype BC type bottles. So another bottle I picked up and I haven't tried it yet. So I don't know if it's like hype when it comes to the taste or just hype in general, but I picked up the Michter's toasted barrel finish rye. So kind of happy. I picked this up. Um, I have a friend that might want this more than I do. So I'm, I've read good reviews. I, I have two. Um, I think it was Scotch for everyone that said it might be better than the Booker's Rye. You might confirm that if it was you. I think that was you. There, see? Yep. I mean, I'll put them side so, by side. Yeah, that's why I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so I have a friend that's like, oh, dude, I've been wanting this bottle. And I, I'm lucky enough that uh, one of the liquor stores I went to, he's like, hey, I, I can hold you one if you want. And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll pick it up. Why not? So I might give it to him and then might ask for a sample. So I don't know. So I picked that bottle. And- I mean, you could... Just sell it to me, and then I will and give you a sample. Go, right? So I'll, <laughs> I'll see. He was the one that helped me with the World of 12, too. And he's the one that, the silly guy that freaking traded the Michter's 10. So, But from your account, he's, he traded that Michter's 10 that you got that tastes like King Comer juice. Yep, so, um, in 2016. Maybe he won. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I have. Um, I, I Like, Michter's, for some reason, their toasted stuff, their bourbon was so super hard to get and hence yeah. that's why i kind of think people are like oh crap that toasted which is this one as well toasted um it got pretty hyped real quick at the same i time. have the original toasted offering the non-barrel proof toasted uh, the bourbon and it was okay yeah, yeah. so I, i've, I've been hunting those. for that and i've been people trading me like hey i'll trade it for you but like for like 200 bucks <clears throat> worth bottles i'm like oh no, no. Dude, i picked like it up less than 100 bucks, bucks. yeah I, i'm at the point where for certain bottles i'll maybe do double Double the double the cost, but once you give me freaking crazy <clears throat> prices, man, like eight hundred dollars for a Pappy twelve? No, sorry. Eight hundred dollars for a Pappy twenty three? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I drop yeah. it in RP. All right, what's the what's the last bottle? I think you have. <clears throat> oh, the last one is just one that um, this one was like from the beginning when I first started tasting bourbon, mm-hmm. but like first it was like all scotch, then it was a little bit of bourbon, yeah. and uh, and somebody tried to get me to drink some of this. This is what you call a bottle of fire. I mean, at you know, sixty-seven point eight percent alcohol content, this is literally a bottle of fire. Now, do you think that's overhyped or is just? It's super overhyped because you can't drink it any way that people talk about drinking it. Everybody talks about drinking it like a regular bottle, yeah. and you can't drink it like a regular bottle because it will literally kill you. It's, I mean, the alcohol content is so high, you might drink what three, four, five drops at a time. And I mean, that's going to cover you even with some water. That's going to cover you for at least, I don't know, like a regular dram would. Weak sauce, man. You're weak. What can I say? I'm just saying, you know, like, I love this shit, dude. This is awesome. This is like my third bottle. So, and. We got both of those in your hands. Yes, I do. <laughs> I've got the new ones and the old ones. Yeah. No, I like the Elijah Craig. It's good because it's it was cheap and easy to find. And it was at Bower Proof. Oh, it, when Bower Proof. it's still cheap and easy to find. It's still like 60 I can't bucks. find this one anymore. The old bottle. Oh, the old one? Yeah. I mean, it's going and away. And then there are, like, what proof is your one on your bottle? Mine's 136. Uh, all the ones I have are like stupid. This one's 135.6. They did a whole series of like which ones are what years. Yeah. And, so and there which is releases. one, I think it's 138. There is one it. that is like ridiculously high. And I think think maybe you tried that one if you think this is a bottle of fire i mean it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter which one i've tried a bunch oh, really? of them actually yeah. yeah i don't know i feel as though like, just... i guess my palate like what is it i have the stag juniors and i've got them by batches too like and that's high proof i've got like three of those sitting around those aren't as bad as this oh. just something about the elijah craig is just oh, worse like was it um scotch's dummies and all those guys the bottle of wow man i think like i'm surprised you can drink but like, yeah it is like drinking fire so 
Yeah, seriously. But uh, it smells good though. Oh, no, it's hell good. I think. Where's I even got the normal Big 12 over there as well, the discontinued 12-year-old, which now, if you guys didn't know, the Elijah Craig Bow Proof is now a 12-year-old statement. So if you guys can see that, it actually says 12-year-old inside. So that they kind of blended them together. So this is now a 12-year-old Bow Proof. So. Hmm, that's fancy. Yep. But um, no, I'm a big fan of Elijah Craig. I still haven't opened my 18-year-old, so I know that was a bit of a hype bottle. I think it was about 200 bucks, yeah. Yeah, the 23 tastes like burnt toothpicks, and the 18 is about as far as you want to go into the Elijah Craig range yeah. for flavor. Yeah, I definitely got that bottle for like, hey, I know I'm probably not going to drink it if I can trade it for something that I really want. But, That's what I would do. Yeah. Sorry, Elijah Craig. True, but uh, I do I do love their uh, barrel proof stuff. And to be honest, as most people know, I'm a big barrel proof person, so it's kind of my wheelhouse. Alrighty. It's not always bad. Yeah. So our chat, uh, we got a couple more minutes left. Uh, anything you guys want to discuss? Anything you guys want to talk oh. about? Or do you have something? Oh, uh, since everybody's in chat yeah. and listening, hopefully everybody's still there. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know, Whiskey with a View is getting together a bunch of bloggers yes, yes, to yes, yes, do yes. a giant um, series of giveaways so that people can, yes, burn toothpicks, Shimon, seriously. But um, <clears throat> Whiskey with a View is doing a giant giveaway that a bunch of bloggers are getting together. I mean, everybody's donated bottles. Um, some of us have donated cigars, some of us have donated swag so that uh, people can donate some money to the Houston Food Bank. And then that money, as it grows, um, every $500 marker, I think it is, uh, he's going to give away a package. So I think when we hit the $5,000 mark, uh, Scotch and Stiff's package kicks in. I'm giving away a McAllen cast strength, the old red label, mm-hmm. uh, two Scotch and Stiff glasses, and a Pappy cigar. Now, it's do legit. you remember what the link was if uh, people, I'm trying to look at it right now. So uh, uh, if you go to add whiskey with a view on Instagram, you'll be able to see it. So yeah, I'm trying to pull it up for you guys. Hopefully, Shimon's got for everyone in Jam Dude have already done this. I'm assuming they have. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it up for you guys here. But yeah, no, I think that's a great cause. Um, with all the things that are happening right now, something positive, you know, especially with our community, you know. Yeah, help all those people that are down there in in Texas that got hit hard by Harvey. Yeah. And I know people. I mean. People are still getting hard, hit hard with everything. So, yeah. So I'm going yeah. to go find me right Don't now. Don't worry, Jam. Dude, there's still time. I think this is going for. I think. Um. I think Nate's running it for like two weeks or three weeks. I think total. So, what do I think about the Pappy cigar? Uh. So I bought a set of the Pappy cigars, the mid-sized ones. They're not bad. They remind me a lot of the KFC Muats, and I think they're also from Jewish State. So they might be on that same. The KFC Muat. What's that? Have you never tried that cigar? <laughs> like, Jam, um, Scotch for everyone's asking about it, so I'm, I'm sure he's tried it oh. before, maybe. But, um, but yeah, so it's it's in that same vein of something being, you know, the tobacco's aged in a barrel, so you get some of that flavor. Yeah, he gets it. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, I'm like, huh? <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. So it's a little, yeah, it's just a little sweet on the end, and then it's it's got good flavor. But, yeah, it's not bad. Man, I'm still trying to find this Instagram stuff, man. Yeah, you'll find it. It's definitely not my go-to cigar. I think lately the Oliva V Melanio, that thing is just so stinking. Such a good cigar. What's oh there it is. Yeah, yeah. can you bring that up on the? Yep, I will. So um, it's gonna cover your face, bro. I'm sorry. That's fine. It's just my face. So there you go, guys. It happens. Um, yes. Best thing to do is go to Instagram, search um, whiskey with a view. Whiskey with. He has it yep. in his title. It is the um, GoFundMe, uh, where we Hurricane Relief for Harvey. If you guys can see it, actually there on the top corner, we're at three hundred and ninety-one dollars out of the twenty k goal. So we're almost at that five hundred mark. Thirteen people have um, have donated so far. So um, yeah, if you guys haven't seen that, uh, okay, we'll take a look again. Whiskey with a view on Instagram. On the title of his page, he actually has a link to it. Go link, press the donate now button on there. Boop, boop, boop. And then, yeah, a minimum of $5. Uh, put your um, Instagram tag or um, name in there. I think, I think to be eligible right. for the packages, yep. you have to donate at least $10, I believe. So, so there you go. So $10, <clears throat> um, right down where uh, Wally's face is. <laughs> yeah, 109, 109 bucks will get you in there a couple of times, Jim, yeah, dude. There you go. So, um, yeah, please uh, help and support. This is the whiskey community getting together and, uh, you know, helping out. 
it's not the first time. It's not the last time. There are actually a couple other uh, giveaways that are going on too. I know that uh, Valveni Gemma is coordinating a big one here in DC awesome. that she's going to have a bunch of people donate to. So that's going on. Um, there's an organization not far from my house that's donating. I donated a bottle of Highland Park Dark Origins to them. Like, there's a lot of opportunities for people to win good good stuff and still help people that are in need. Yeah, and guys, if um, if you have anything as well, just tag us in there. We're more than happy to repost and um, share the love and stuff like that. Um, I know for sure. Being... Gemma is a boss. <laughs> I still have to meet her, man. She seems pretty cool. Gemma's cool. So is Tracy. I mean, like Glenn Fittick, Balvenie, like they have like some of the coolest ambassadors. I think th- so is um oh what's his name? There are a couple of cool ambassadors from McAllen also. I mean for all the hype and everything yeah. the bottles get, like Nicola and um oh, what's his name the new young guy, who does the East Coast now. Uh, I can forget his name, but like just just really cool people. And to be honest, I think you know I know this is going a bit of a topic, but like talking to those people, it gets you more engaged into the product, into the brand, and to be honest, it expands your horizon, which is great. So. Liquid Scotch for everyone said. I, I tell this to everybody after going to Scotland earlier this year. Like, if you can reach out to the brand ambassadors, dude, it's the best thing ever. Like, it, oh, Nicholas, that's his name. Thank you, Shimon. That's <laughs> so awesome. But, like, um, yeah, Balvenie or uh, Scotch for everyone just said that, you know, when Balvenie was closed, Gemma actually walked him around there. And Crazy. Nicola did the same thing for my brother and I at McAllen. And every tour we went on to all the distillers we went to, I mean, 90% of the tours were private and with the distillery managers and were not something you could buy. Awesome. It was so awesome. Well, that's great. And I, to be honest, I think that, you know, showing that personal connection, especially with your influencers or just your regular people just trying to reach out and say, hey, I want to experience. They do it for everybody yeah. from what I from what I read. So I, I, I think that's Cause, great. Because, like, they're just awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to go. Yeah. Um, I was in Scotland when I was younger. <clears> and I, at that time, I didn't really do tours. So I, I kind of regretted that. So, but, um, no, definitely. I, I definitely want to make a trip. I, I saw your pictures on your trip and it looked like an amazing experience. So. <laughs> that's funny yeah i was just reading scotch Reverend. yeah i need to finish actually writing about that entire experience on scotch and sniff i just posted like three new blogs that'll be up in the next three weeks so hopefully i get around to finishing the scotland trip because it was fun but it definitely ended on a poop note yeah. well, what can you do it is what it is right but hey <clears throat> i do want to go back so oh, there you go man we'll, we'll set up a trip i definitely want to go to japan though japan's probably another one i want to go to so Japan would be interesting. You know where I want to go with Japan? I know this is not related yeah. to whiskey, but there's a place. So the photographers, <clears throat> being a photographer, yeah. uh, there's a there's a temple, and I forget the name of the temple. I have it saved in my phone that everyone goes to to take pictures of these. Like it has orange wooden, like over like a cover yeah. that like just goes in this long line that goes around that you can like walk through. It's just I don't know. It's awesome looking. There's so many cool things there. Yeah, I I definitely feel. I think maybe next year I'll do that trip. So maybe we should coordinate if we if we. That'd yeah. be cool. I definitely. I've. I've lived like, well, you lived in Korea, which is freaking hella close. I lived in the, in the Philippines, which is hella close. Like, <laughs> we just never went there. I went to the airport a yep. lot, but that's about it. Well, I mean, it's because Koreans, J- Japanese don't no, even get along. That's, that's true. <laughs> uh, can save it for another time. But yeah, um, overall, <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else, guys, before we head off? Um, just talk in the chat, see if you guys. Nah, I see what they're typing in there. Alrighty. Well, uh, Guys, have a good one. Thank you guys uh, again for joining in. If you guys don't already, we do this every uh, Tuesday around 5-ish. Um, please join the live chat. Your time. 5-ish, five five-ish your time. 5-ish so uh, Pacific Standard Time, the right time. These, I think all of these people Eastern? are Eastern time people. Yeah, they got the Easterns <laughs> right there, 8 eight thirty around that time on Tuesdays. Um, follow us on Instagram. Follow the Instagram page, Whiskey Untitled. Um, and we can maybe even do a little thing later why we named it that. And uh, yeah, so uh, again, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, around that. West Coast. Yep. West Coast is the wrong coast, just for the record. Yeah, the best. The East Coast Dude, is the, the right coast. You've got way too That's many states on, right. on your East Coast. And you know, I mean, like, it gets confusing. All right. I've lived on both. <laughs> this is the good one. We got beaches, man. Okay. Don't say you got beaches. Because we don't have beaches well, here. Florida. Catch Florida, man. Mm, I don't know. There are beaches all up and down the coast. Have you what? Mm-hmm. No, no. You've got Nags Head. You've got Hilton Head. Like all the famous beaches, Cape Cod. No. What? What? All right, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us again, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. And uh, sniff pieces later, guys. Deuces.